Good morning and welcome to the Hidden Woman YouTube channel. I hope everyone is doing well. If you are returning, welcome back. If it's your first time in, welcome. And I keep telling you, I know that there are people that watch this video that haven't subscribed and that's okay. Um, welcome. Glad to have you here. Um, it is Saturday, uh, July 13th. It's a few days after Hurricane Barrel has hit Texas. There are still a lot of people without power and uh, still recovering. But um, the good thing about it is, is that people seem to be genuinely concerned about one another in terms of uh, they're constantly asking other people. And I've had several people at work ask me, customers and coworkers included, you know, do you have power? Did you, you know, is everything okay at your home? And I said, yes, everything is fine. I live in an apartment complex um, for the uh, 55 plus community. I live on the second floor and I didn't lose any power. It flickered here and there, but I didn't lose any power. I had come home from work <clears throat> that night um, and I knew that I should have taken my patio furniture and at least folded it down. And I had two other chairs out there that I had planned to, had planned to reupholster. And about 5.30 in the morning, I heard, boom, 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 boom. And I was like, oh my goodness. So I got up and tried to open the door and the wind was so bad and the rain, I just pulled it shut. I said, I'll get them later. So needless to say, those two chairs are going in the trash. I'm just not going to deal with them. They're wet. And, um, but the other furniture, crazy enough, my two other two chairs, they fell over, but the table never moved. It never moved out of its place. So I shall not be moved. So other than that, everything at my home is fine. If you are in the state of Texas, I pray that all is well at your home and that you didn't lose too much, you know, damage wise, or there was a lot of wind. So that was knocked over a lot of trees and stuff. But I hope everyone, if you're in the state of Texas, that you're doing well and you got power back on. If you don't, it's coming. It's coming back. Anyway, with that being said, let me move on to today's video. I, um, <clears throat> as you can see, I'm talking about the root, the root. And that root goes to um, a deep thing, a deep thing. I have said in previous videos that I am on a health journey and I have been for a couple of years now. I just, you know, know that it was time to change and it wasn't just totally my idea. It was something that the Lord had put in my spirit to start paying attention to what I put in my mouth and I have not arrived anywhere. I am still on this journey because there's still breath in my body. And I'm still learning some things. But in that process, I have gone from 239, 40 pounds or whatever. I've lost a total of 25 pounds. I eat whatever I want to eat. What I mean by that is if I want a Snicker bar, I eat it. If I want cake, I eat it. But I know I can't have a Snicker bar every day, every week. And it's every, just every once in a while, I get a taste for it and I eat it. Because if I don't, I find when I have a taste for something, if it doesn't get satisfied, that later on, the more I wait, that it seems to double up. So instead of just getting a regular size Snicker bar, I buy the king size. And so um, not that I'm supposed to give my flesh everything that it wants, like a spoiled child. We don't do that either. Because there's sometimes I might have something in mind that I want to eat. And if my mind is not on, I don't think about it again and it just passes. But for the most part, I try to be a little more mindful of what I eat. I pay attention to what the food that I'm eating is doing to my body. Um, <clears throat> one Sunday, I stopped by Subway because I didn't prepare anything uh, to eat for when I came home from work, when I came home from church. And I stopped at Subway. Well, the next morning, I paid for it. And I don't mean bathroom wise, I pay for it in my joints. I could feel the stiffness, the, because my, my fingers and toes kind of felt like sausages. They were inflamed from the, um, nitrates and the salt that's in cold cuts. And so I hadn't had a sandwich from Subway in a while, but 
every time I do, that's what happens. So then my question to me is like, okay, so does the sandwich taste that good? I don't care how far and few you have them. Does it taste good enough for you to deal with the joint pain the next day? The answer is no. Because then nothing fits right. My rings don't go on right. Um, my shoes don't fit right. And my joints hurt. So um, I'm not willing to do that. That's just like if I continue to eat a lot of sweets. Um, am I willing to over a period of time to satisfy those cravings and wind up developing type 2 diabetes? And, you know, does it taste good enough for me to lose a toe or a finger? Or the answer is no. No, no. there's nothing that tastes so good that I'm willing to eat it to totally disrupt my body. Answer to that is no. So that is why I'm on this journey. I'm slowly taking those steps to do better by me. And so let me say this. Um, this is my disclaimer. I am not here to uh, give you a cure, to diagnose anything, to tell you what you can and can't do. Because like me, I'm grown. I don't let anybody tell me what I can and can't eat. I eat what I want to eat. And I suffer the consequence or deal with the benefits of what I put in my mouth. So don't assume that I'm here trying to tell you that you shouldn't do this. Do what you want to do. Do you, boo. I'm just sharing some information. So with that being said, the information that I'm sharing is I heard a teaching from a man of God the other day that caused me to stop and really pay attention to what was being said. And um, what he was talking about is how he was basically talking about what we eat, but on a spiritual term. But I took it both ways. And I was like, wow, okay. And so... He was talking about how, okay, so you have, we're the only species that eat from everything and everywhere, okay? So you take the animals in the wilderness. Where do they get their food from? Their environment. They get the food from the environment that they came from. So they were created in, created to be in the wilderness, and so that's where they are. You have the fish, you know, the 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 uh, the sea world. Where are they getting their nourishment from? In the water that they live in, in the environment that they live in. The the birds, same thing. Where are they get? You know, that's the same as you know being in the wild. And God is absolutely taking care of them. He, when He created them, He provided for them. He didn't intend for them to have to. Um, sit around and figure out where their next meal was going to come from. He provided for them. Okay, so let's go back to where man came from. In the beginning, we were created. Now there was Adam, and, um, Adam was created, and after that, procreation, that's us. But where did Adam come from? Adam came from the dust of the earth. And where was he placed? In the garden. What's in the garden? Fruits and vegetables. That's what's in the garden. So the Lord placed them in a garden and provided for them. And so it wasn't until after the fall, after Adam and Eve committed high treason, that they were kicked out of the garden and had to go fend for themselves. At that point, they had to figure it out. They no longer had, uh, they were no longer able to be in their birthday suits where they were in the garden because the minute that their eyes were open, they noticed that they were naked. And it's like, you were naked. The Lord said, who told you you was naked? They didn't even know what naked was until their eyes were opened. So, because of what they did, the Lord said, got to go, got to go. I, you, you, you disobeyed me, so you got to go. And to make sure that they weren't coming back up in the garden, he placed an angel at the gate of the garden to make sure that they don't come back in or anybody else for that matter. And so when they lived in the garden, they were able to eat whatever they wanted, every 
every uh, from every tree that was in there, there was something growing. They just could have reached up and ate it, but no problem. Um, there was no sickness. There was no disease in the garden at all. Like heaven. There's none of that in heaven. And so when they were out in the outside of the garden, they now had to provide for themselves. But let me say, the Lord didn't just leave them like, well, you're on your own now. And he, no, mm -mm, that's not the God that we serve. You mess up, he still got you. So I believe that God gave them the idea to begin to hunt. And he, well, he told Adam he was going to have to till the ground. And he's going to have to work. So if you want to get something out the ground, you're going to have to work the ground. And uh, so, you know, as time went on, we know that then they started killing animals and they used the animals uh, fur for clothing, for clothes, because the animals and stuff were clothed from the inside out. So if you take a dog and you shave all his hair off, it's going to grow back. That's why they constantly take them to the groomers to get their hair cut because they grow their clothes from the inside out. Us, we got to put something on. Whereas when we were in the garden, we didn't have to worry about that. The style was nude. <laughs> and it wasn't a problem. Today, we're so ashamed. We're covering up. Well, no, we ain't covering up. There's some folks. Not going there. Not going there. So anyway, they used the animal skin for clothing and they begin to eat the meat. So that's how, as far as I can tell, that's how this whole meat eating thing got started. And so, um, but I believe back then that that was okay to eat meat. I really do. I don't think that there was a problem with it. I know that we have people that don't believe, you know, we vegans and people have different reasons for not eating meat. Um... But the meat that they were eating back then and the meat that we get today, ain't no comparison. There was no comparison. They didn't have all the herbicides, the pesticides. They didn't have all the chemicals and stuff now that we have now back then. They didn't have that. And so um, they ate it. They didn't have seasoned salt or anything like that. They they. They, they caught it, they killed it, they cooked it over fire, and they ate it, you know? But in this day and age, they, they're they making meat in the laboratory, okay? I think I posted one on the other day how they were making this meat, and you couldn't, I could not tell the difference. And I believe that we're we have been eating a lot of, man-made meat and not even realizing it because what they're doing is trying to think in their way, trying to sustain the planet. You know, uh, we'll create meat. So we'll always have meat. And um, I'm not getting into some type of conspiracy theory. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just saying that we have to learn to take better care of our bodies. I had a crazy dream last night and I thought to myself, Oh, yeah, I don't know if I want any more of that. I, I I just don't. Now, I'm not telling you that I'm vegan because you have people that are vegan that are very unhealthy. They call them dirty vegans because they eat a lot of processed food. And they think just because they're not eating meat that everything that they eat is okay because even they they have this meat called seitan that they, well, they, this substitute they call seitan. And I saw how they made it. I'm like, I don't want none of that. Mm-mm. Mm -mm, I, don't, I don't want none of that. And so, um, do I still eat meat? I do. Um, I'm basically, but do I probably eat meat maybe once or twice a week, if that. I just don't have the taste for it anymore. I'm not saying that, oh, I'm vegan. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I don't eat meat like I used to because at one point in my life, I feel that if you were going to sit down to have dinner, if you didn't have meat on the plate, then you weren't eating. Even if you had a salad, put some meat in. If you had breakfast, you got to have some kind of sausage or bacon or something like that. There had to be a meat. If you had lunch, a sandwich, there had to be meat somewhere. I no longer think like that. I'm thinking, what is best for my body? Knowing what they're doing to the foods that I'm putting in my body, what, what do I need to do? And so I started juicing a few years ago. 
And um, I absolutely love it. I actually went out this morning and um, got some more fruit because uh, the other day I bought, uh, fruit, uh, bought fruits and vegetables to make juice, especially the green juice. And, but I had made watermelon juice one time and I used, um, oranges and pineapple and a little lemon in that watermelon juice. And you're talking about something good. So when I went to Walmart the other day, I wasn't thinking that people had, you know, for the storm had gone into Walmart because, you know, when they say a storm is coming, people go and they stock up on stuff, which was a little crazy because you stocking up stuff to put in your refrigerator and you know lost power and I digress anyway but somebody got smart enough to bring some of their groceries to at work and put it in the freezer it's like my stuff ain't going bad <laughs> but anyway I went to the store and like the shelves were kind of empty so there was no oranges at all and that's good I'm glad they bought the oranges so people can have something healthy to eat while they're home and there was no oranges. And so then um, I was like, man, I need to make my, my watermelon juice. and But I want the oranges. So I went back this morning and they had oranges. But that bag was almost $9 for probably about six oranges, seven oranges. That weren't even 100% ripe. I said, oh, no. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So I left there and went to another store and spent almost the same amount of money and got double the oranges that were ripe. And so today I will be making my watermelon, orange, pineapple with a little lemon juice. And I'm doing it and I'm putting it all in the freezer. I probably got about two, four, six, eight, about eight or, or ten jars of juice that I made the other day, but I'm making some more. And the reason that I'm making it and put it in the freezer is because I'm getting ready to do a juice cleanse. I'm getting ready to go. Uh, making enough juice to be on a cleanse for at least 10 days, at least 10 days. Uh, the longest I've gone was seven days. And in that seven days time frame, uh, the benefits that I received was um, I lost nine pounds and um, I had a lot of energy, not that jittery energy that you get from like caffeine and, and monster drinks and stuff. It wasn't that kind of energy. I slept well. I had clarity. I could think. I could think. And remember stuff. And so I had to look at the pros and cons. I'm like, these are the benefits that I'm getting when I juice. But then when I eat cooked food or I eat a meal, um, what what do I feel? You know, when they say, oh, the itis sets in, I'm not going to explain what the itis is. If you don't know, you just don't know. But the correct way that that goes is that all of the blood goes to your digestive system to begin to break down that food so it can separate the food, put it where it needs to go, and eliminate some and store some. But because of the food that we're eating, our bodies don't know what to do with a lot of the stuff that we eat. And especially because it's mixed, it doesn't recognize the food, so it stores it in fat cells. Now, you even have small people that have fat on their bodies. And it still gets stored there. Those chemicals are being stored in the fat cells. Uh, going a little deeper into that, that's one of, one of the reasons why there's a lot of obesity in the U.S. today. Because we have access to a whole lot of stuff. It ain't really food. You can't call um, cookies and cake um, and candy. That's not food. That's not food. But... People can uh, consume a lot of that stuff. And then sometimes, you know, a lot of sodas, a lot of sugary drinks. And they have said, well, it's diet. I'm like, that's probably worse than the real stuff. I don't drink soda at all. Um, probably maybe once or twice a year, I might drink a Sprite if I have a sandwich. Um, that's about it. But um, not saying that I'm better than anybody else. If you drink soda, have at it. Have Drink as much as you want to. But a lot of sugary drinks. So there's a lot of people that are overweight, but not well nourished because the food has no nourishment in it. That's why they eat so much of it. It gets stored because the, it's stored in the fat cells because the body doesn't know what to do with it. It doesn't know how to digest it. And so it stores it in the fat cells. 
And then if you eat something that does have some kind of cal calories in it, that's probably where you're getting your energy from. So can you, um, a lot of people make fun of people that are overweight. Oh, she fat or he fat, this, that, and the other. And, and uh, let's be real. Society looks down on people that are overweight. They do. They do. Even I sometimes look sideways at people that are overweight. When I say look sideways, is I'll double, take a double take. I was at work yesterday and this woman was in front of me. Um, I was coming back from my lunch break and I just happened to notice her because I went in the aisle to see if I can find some um, dark chocolate covered uh, walnuts. Walnut, walnuts are good for you. And so is the dark chocolate where I used to eat the milk chocolate, which is not so good for you, but... You know, occasionally I'll still have it. And I mean, I felt bad for her because you can see what they call lymphedema was in her legs and they were a lot of fluid just there, ankles swollen to the point that she wanted to put on a pair of shoes, feet, every, everything. She just looked like she was swollen and she had a very young face. And so I can't imagine if she doesn't change anything, what that's going to look like in maybe another year. And then, you know, you wind up in the hospital at the doctor's office on all kinds of medication, trying to, uh, they give you medication to, to help the fluid in the body. And then that'll cause a side effect. And then you got to take something for that side effect. And then that'll cause a side effect. And you got... Before you know it, you're on all this medication for what? Because you won't take the time to pay attention to what you're putting in your mouth. And that is where a lot of the disease comes from. The disease comes from is what we put in our mouth. Um, I heard this now, and I don't care what anybody says. I don't believe it. I absolutely do not believe it. I heard that everybody has a cancer gene. Well, where did it come from? God did not give us a cancer gene. I was like, y'all got to be kidding. As I tell you what, you, you take that down the road and sell it to somebody else because I don't believe it. I don't have a cancer gene and I'll never have cancer in Jesus name. I'm not going to speak that over myself. I'm not going to receive that. But um, our words are seeds and, you know, you got to be careful what you're saying. About yourself and other people. Anyway, that's another, a whole other thing. But anyway, um, I just thought that that was very interesting that that's what the topic was, you know, what, what was being taught that we get our nourishment from our, the environment that we came from. Um, Adam, our father, Eve, our mother came from the dust, came from the dust of the earth, the ground. Where should we be getting our nourishment from? The ground, fruits, vegetables, plants. I had I have people that will ask me if I happen to talk about juice and how I'm making some change. Where do you get your protein from? I'm ready. I've been ready. I'm like, well, I know this is crazy, but where do you get your protein from? You know, chicken, I, I, I eat my meat. Well, where that chicken getting his protein from? Where that cow getting his protein from? Where's the lamb or whatever meat? Where's the protein coming from? So let's just take beef. What is that cow doing every day, all day? He's out in the field and he's eating the grass that grows out the ground. That's all. Nobody's feeding him anything other than what grows out the ground. And he chews on it all day long. And then we turn around and kill the cow and we eat the cow and say, we're getting the protein from the cow. Well, it's like anything. Let's do business. Eliminate the middleman. Go get the protein for yourself. Where are you going to get the protein from? From the stuff that grows out the ground. There's protein in fruits and vegetables. Or mainly in the vegetables. Um, again, just, you know, still doing my research on a lot of stuff. But take the, uh, the gorilla. 
What does he eat? I mean, uh, let's say gorilla got a six pack. <laughs> the gorillas have a six pack. Where is he getting his muscle from? I mean, what is it? What, where do you see a, a, a fat uh, gorilla anywhere? You don't. He look like he be, he he look like he's staying in the gym. And what is he eating? He's eating plants. That's all he's eating. Look at the the horses. They they're beautiful. They're they're you know you can they're they're not fat and overweight. You know I, I guess some of them could be. I don't know. But again, you know a beautiful horse. You know he's he he's strong. He's majestic. Where are he getting his um protein from? What what is he eating? And so I don't know what makes us think that we're any different. That we should be eating. You know, think thinking that the only source of uh, way for us to get our protein is from an animal. That's not true. I also, when I make a smoothie, I use plant-based protein to put in my smoothie. Um, I'm not lacking anything, you know. Yeah, I still got a long way to go. And like I said, it's on a journey and I'm, I'm doing my thing and I'm feeling good. And, um, and I'm going to be sharing those things as you go. I have a friend of mine who called me. Uh, I talked to her the other day and she said, how's the juicing going? I said, it's going well. I'm not giving up my juice. And when, uh, like I just got back from North Carolina last month, gave my daughter a surprise birthday party. And um, before that, I knew that I was not going to be juicing because I knew that I was going to be eating at the party. And uh, so I thought, but I can honestly tell you, my, my whole appetite has changed. I don't eat nearly what I used to eat. Now, I also know that I'm getting, uh, I'm aging. I ain't getting old. I'm aging. And uh, senior people don't seem to have the same, don't, some, some of us, you know, I've worked in a nursing home for a long time, don't have the same appetite as we did when we were younger. And so, um, and especially if we, you know, we really get active, you know, we don't carry the same weight either. But um, again, that has a lot to do with the lifestyle of the senior, but for the most part, um, the appetites change. And so I don't eat a whole lot of stuff that I used to eat. And then sometimes, so, literally sometimes I can go most of the day and not really eat anything and find that I'm drinking a lot of water and I'm not really hungry. And, oh, but you got to eat something. I'm like, who said so? Who said I got to eat something? If I'm not hungry, why do I have to eat? Because, oh, it's five o'clock. That's what, you know, dinner time, five o'clock. I used to do that with my kids. We ate dinner every day, five o'clock. And you get into the habit. Who said we had to have three squares a day? What, what, where do we get all of this stuff from? So for me, again, talking about me, talking about moi, Yesterday, I uh, what I ate was this, very simple. I was at work. Um, I had a project, and it was taking me most of the day to get it done. A lot of moving around, drinking a lot of water because I was thirsty. And I didn't have any breakfast, and I got up like 4.30 in the morning because I had to be to work pretty early. And then when I started to get hungry, I was like, man, I didn't, br I didn't bring anything because I was getting off at a decent time where I could, you know, just go home and, and fix something to eat. But I found the more water I drank, the hunger was gone. Gone. So um, it started to come back and I was at, and I was like, I'm not stopping to pick it. I'm not, I'm not eating out. So um, I left work. I just grabbed, you know, some, um, um, I think almonds uh, or cashews off the shelf and bought those and munched those on the way home. And then when I got home, I still wasn't really hungry. So I made... And this may sound a little gross to some of y'all, but um, I, I used to eat this when I was pregnant with my first child. Um, tomato sandwich. There's my vegetables. And it was bread. It's bread that's like 45 calories per slice. So I made, I toasted the bread, put a little mayo on it, sliced up some tomatoes, seasoned them, and ate that and had a cup of tea. I was fine. And that's all I ate yesterday. Oh, you should have eaten more than that. Why? Who says so? Who said I should eat? I'm fine. I got up this morning and I'm having mushroom coffee. It's still, I have to reheat it. But um, I stopped drinking coffee. Uh, my last cup of coffee was June 9th of 2023. I don't miss it. 
I don't miss the smell. Every once in a while, somebody might mention something. And I was like, yeah, maybe have a cup of coffee. But then every time I think about it, I'm like, yeah, I only want a coffee. I drink this coffee because it's, it's, it's called it's mushroom coffee. And um, it's called Rise. I saw it on Facebook. And um, it's very good for your digestive. So, um, but Rise is a little pricey. And they want to put you on an auto thing. And I don't like anybody just going in my checking account and taking anything because I forget to be like, no, 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 don't auto. Let me order it when I want it. But when you are not on a auto ship, it costs more. I'm not willing to spend $45 for that, for that bag of coffee. So each time that I've gotten it, I did it for the auto ship so I could get the second bag for less than half price. And it lasts me a long time. And when it runs out, this time it runs out, I'll find something else that I can um, use to help my digestion. And um, really, I probably don't even need that. But, um, you know, because I'm kind of good in that area. So anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. And uh, just kind of think about, you know, you only have one body to carry you through this life. Because in the next life, we have a glorified body. And we won't need all this stuff that we use in today. We won't, there won't be any need for any protein. <laughs> because that glorified body, you got everything you need. This body, however, we got to do something different with it. So take care of the house that you live in now. If you keep it clean, you know, just take it to, you know, the natural. Who wants to live in a nasty, dirty house? You can find my house nasty or dirty. And so we have to look at our bodies the same way. Who, you know, when you just dumping junk in there and then you got all these ailments and stuff, where's it coming from? From the stuff that's coming from the outside, putting it on the inside. That's where it's coming from. So um, be mindful of um, what you're doing to your temple, how you're treating your temple, because you only get one. And I know that you can get a hip replacement, a knee replacement, a heart replacement, a, you can get all that stuff. I'm trying to leave here. I'm not saying I'm trying to leave with what I came here with. That's not my point. My point is I'm trying to make sure it all works while I'm here. I do not want to be stuck in this body. I mean, but if I ever had to have a replacement, I have to have a replacement. I'm not saying that. Uh, I'm going to use common sense. I'm going to do what I need to do. But um, as much as is in my control, I am doing what I can to take the best care I can of this body. And I hope that you will do the same. So next time, take care of you. Have a good one. God bless. Bye.